Welcome in. So latent heat. Uh, this is a little bit different than when you were studying the specific heat capacity, but they do relate to exactly the same thing, which is basically the transfer of thermal energy. Okay, so meaning the release of thermal energy or possibly the absorption of thermal energy to either um, break down the potential energy bonds that are within a substance. And that particular breakdown of the bonds is indeed related to the latent heat. And then the kinetic okay, energy of the kind of vibrating molecules within uh, various substances at a particular state, so either a solid okay, or in liquid or in a gas, so that particular absorption or release of the kinetic energies typically is related to the specific heat capacity. Now, when you join the two, uh, it is certainly worthwhile to be able to think about both of them. So in this video, I want to be able to just introduce you to latent heat, which is really kind of the, you know, hidden um, heat okay, that you have. And that occurs when a particular state, so either a solid, changes to a liquid, or a liquid changes to a gas, or vice versa. So from a gas to a liquid, okay, or from a liquid to a solid. So those particular instances, as you may know, okay, so for example, if you are going from a solid to a liquid, then you're going to be running into okay, the concept of melting. And sometimes that is re referred to as fusion within physics. So you might hear either or melting is definitely the more common word that we use in everyday language. And now within this process, okay, or if you were going from a liquid back to a solid, and that would be called freezing, okay, in that particular instance, that is the hidden energy that we are talking about. So this is the latent heat, which is basically hidden within here that you don't really see and the common feature of this kind of hidden item is that the temperature, and recall that the temperature is the uh, average kind of kinetic energy that is within the actual substance. So that temperature on average will stay more or less the same during this process, okay, of melting or of freezing. Now, the same thing happens when you're going from a liquid to a gas or from a gas to a liquid. So here, okay, you will have this latent heat, okay? So again, it's kind of the hidden item that we don't really see what's happening, but what is happening is that the energy either being absorbed or released, okay, is going right into the bonds. And then after a while, you do notice that the actual state has changed, okay? Or it slowly changes as you can see that. So, you know, from a liquid, from a gas, you know, it's going to start to boil or vaporize, and then slowly the molecules are going to be released until eventually it all becomes a gas. We certainly do see that in water. All right. So that is kind of the concept okay, of the latent heat. We can certainly measure this latent heat. So how much of this actual energy will be needed? And that particular measurement um, is independent of the temperature change because, again, it is hidden. So meaning that in this process right here and right here, the temperature doesn't really go up or down. It just kind of stays level. Now, there are instances that you might run into, and this certainly happens, for example, in your fridge, okay, with ice cubes. If they stay there long enough. There are there is going to be you know some energy okay that is kind of uh, gone through where the ice cubes you notice are getting smaller but they certainly don't necessarily change to a liquid they actually kind of just jump from a solid all the way up to a gas okay or vice versa and that is called sublimation now this isn't a topic that you study quite a lot of but this word you know you might hear here or there so don't be surprised that this actually happens and then if you go back in here then you're kind of bypassing the liquid you're going straight to a gas okay or you're going right into from a gas to a solid and that's called sublimation um, but in studying within physics you're going to be studying kind of the standard what happens normally in the process so from a solid to a liquid from a liquid to a gas okay and those instances between the melting and then the freezing and then the boiling and then the condensation are the things that you may want to be able 
to calculate and then how much of that heat is actually um, there. So here is at least what I have presented is a kind of a graph between the temperature and the energy transfer. And here what we're talking about, and I'm not saying, okay, within this particular diagram that we're on the positive side, meaning that these are positive temperatures. This, these could be negative temperatures with regards to, um, let's say, degrees Celsius. But if you're talking Kelvin, then obviously they're from zero onwards. And if we want to be able to describe, okay, what happens here. So if you imagine if something is a solid, then what typically will happen is that you're going to notice, okay, that your temperature is going to be indeed increasing. So that particular temperature, as it is, as, as it is increasing, okay, so, um, or possibly decreasing, then you notice that you can put in energy. So notice this is the energy transfer, okay, as temperature increases or as possibly temperature decreases as you're going in that direction, okay, and this, you know, you can notice, but this would be at a particular state, so possibly a solid, right? And in this instance, as you are looking at this, this is when we were talking about the specific heat capacity, Okay, so this is exactly what we're referring to when we're doing the transfer of the energy of the thermal energy. Okay, as temperature increases, you may recall that the actual formula for that was that the heat okay, was equal to the mass okay, times, so this was mass, times the specific heat capacity and then the delta T. I can put up a link up above there okay, to refresh you on that. This does not happen when you're calculating latent heat when there is an actual transfer now, so a change of state. And what you will notice is that during that change of state, the temperature stays the same, but the amount of energy, notice that it is increasing. So the energy is still increasing, and what's happening from here to here is that that energy is being used to break down the bonds. So if you're going from a solid back into a liquid, right? So that particular state right here, all that energy is going to break down kind of some of the bonds so that now you lose the rigidity of that solid. And now those actual, some of those bonds get broken, not all of them. And then these things can now much more freely because they have much more energy, okay, to be able to roll around and then they look like a liquid. Now, once you transfer all of that energy, Okay, and you break down okay, from the solid and you get into uh, a liquid, then the same thing continues. So what happens is now, okay, as you're going through, so this can now continue. So the temperature increases and then the energy increases. These don't have to be the same slope. So, these, so this one and this one, they don't necessarily have to be the same slope. You may actually have a different slope. You may not need as much energy into a liquid to increase the temperature as you did in a solid, right? So I am just kind of showing you what is happening in here and then the changes of state. So within here, so you know, so this would have been, if you're going through, then this is the actual melting component, right? Or fusion, so this is the melting that is happening in here and the energy is going in there. And now again, at some point you're going to hit, right? And in here, so this is going to be kind of the vaporization or the boiling point right, where the temperature again, notice that it's going to stay flat. So that means the temperature is kind of fixed in here. And the temperature here is fixed, because those are the changes of state. And then again, you know, you keep going, right. So this is kind of once again, the temperature increases as you transfer the um, energies. So if you're thinking about this, this is kind of how it would be. So within here, so let me remove this for the moment. So this would have been kind of the solid state, right? This is kind of the liquid state, the temperature increases. This is kind of the gas where now all of the bonds have been, been broken entirely, okay? And then pretty much uh, it's just kinetic energy that the thermal energy is stored in. There's very few, okay? And then it just kind of evaporated, right? So that's the vaporization or the boiling. So this is what you would have within here and these, um, particular changes of state occur. And now if you want to be able to find out as you're going along here, so within here, so this is the latent heat 
that you would be trying, okay, this is the latent heat of the boiling, this is of the melting, and you would be able to figure out, okay, how much energy, right? So how much heat would you actually need to kind of break these things down? So to melt them, okay, or to boil them. And that's what you are trying to calculate there. While all in here, so as you are going in here, okay, or in here, or in here, so this is where you were referring to that specific heat capacity and you would have a different specific heat capacity. So this would have been for your solid specific heat capacity. This would have been for your liquid, okay? And this would have been for your gas and you would be able to calculate these. And now if you wanted to calculate, for example, you know, let's say something starts over here at a certain temperature and then you wanna see, you know, when does it actually melt all together, then you can calculate it in two steps. You can find the actual uh, specific, from the specific heat capacity, how much heat would be needed, okay, to increase the temperature of that item, right, so that it gets to the melting point. Then you would be able to calculate what the latent heat is, and I'll show you what the equation for that is. It's rather simple, okay, to actually melt it down. And then you can, you know, you can keep going in here, you know, depending on what temperature you wanna get through and how many of these states you're going to change. So I hope that that makes sense to you and you can certainly do that in reverse, right? So you can certainly start from a gas, okay? So you'd be going up on top and then, you know, the gas would be coming down and then eventually you would actually absorb energy so that it starts to create a liquid, okay? Um, so that would have been a flat line and then it goes down again when it's a liquid, okay? And then the actual not, not melting, but the freezing. So that would have been looking a little bit different. So what you would have had is, so on this, you know, you would have had something like this, where you would have started off from a gas, okay, up on top, okay, then it would have been, this is the, 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 the boiling, okay, or condensation that would be happening. Then this is the liquid, okay, this is now from the liquid, it now changes back. So it's freezing into a solid, and you would have seen something like that. So it would have been a little bit different in terms of the energy absorption, okay, and then the energy release, right? So within here, so the, the one that I have uh, put in here, you are absorbing certainly um, the energy in here as this is going through. So that energy is okay being absorbed okay into that substance, and then it's breaking down, melting things, keeps going, then it's boiling, right? So it keeps absorbing energy as it's going through. And then within here, you would have to put in energy, okay, as you're going through in here so that it changes the state. So notice one would have been, okay, warming up um, and then one would be um, cooling down. So that's the absorption and the release of energy that you would have, okay, so within there. So there you have it. So that's kind of how those charts would look like in here. And now if you wanted to be able to kind of do the calculations, Okay, so within here, so this, this is the actual formula. Notice that it's the same Q, okay, so it's still heat. Now this is just the latent heat, so we abbreviate it with an L, and now you're gonna have kind of different ones. So within here, so notice it's called the specific latent heat, okay, now it's of fusion or of freezing. We call that L, okay, and we'll put a little subscript F, although you don't necessarily have to, you just have to know what you're referring to. So this is a fusion, which is melting or the freezing, but you do call it actually the latent heat of fusion. Okay, so that's at this point right here. That's would have been over here. That's what you would have had. That's this one. Then you have the specific latent heat of vaporization, okay, which or condensation, right? So this is what you have. You use the same terminology for both, and that is actually right here. So if you're going in this direction or if you're coming down, so that would have been right there. So if you were mapping this out for yourself, this is kind of the fusion, okay? This is the vaporization that you would be using in here, all right? So that's what you would have had. And then on the other ones, as you can see there, you know, you, if it's actually in a state like a solid, then you're talking about the specific heat capacity, you know, so how much energy you would need to increase the temperature of that. And then in general, we typically will just simply call it specific latent heat, okay? And we use L and notice in the formula, we use L and you decide, okay? Depending on the question, is it gonna be an F right here or is it gonna be a V uh, for vaporization or condensation? And this is the formula itself. So this is how much energy you would need. M is the mass 
and L is the specific heat capacity that you have. Notice the temperature does not change because you're changing states. And if you wanted to compare it, so if you recall, the specific heat capacity equation was M, right? Instead of L, we used C, that was the specific heat capacity within the, the actual state itself, it hasn't changed. And then it was the change in temperature. There is no change in temperature for latent heat because you are actually utilizing that energy to break down the bonds and not necessarily increasing the kinetic energy. So the temperature does not change. But these now become your two equations within here. This is for the change of state, okay? And this is when you are at, okay, at a particular state, like a solid or a liquid or a gas, and you have to look those up depending on what you are dealing with. The units are identical, okay, that you have, okay? So Q is always gonna be in um, energy units, so typically joules if you want SI standards, but it can be in calories, okay, or it can be in any other, so kilojoules, for example. And then on the right-hand side, notice that now you no longer have this change in T, so that means that your L, so it's going to take on typically the energy unit, which is gonna be standard units joules, and then the mass unit, so divided by mass, and that's going to be typically in kilograms if it's SI standard. If it's not, make sure that you're just consistent as you're going through. But this is a very simple equation. So that's what I wanted to mention about latent heat. So at least now, if you hear this terminology of latent heat, you will know that you're referring to okay, the changes of state. So that's the energy that is utilized. Okay, So heat that we would have to find in order to change a state. All right, so that's what you would have. I'll set up um, an, uh, an example or two in a separate vid video that I would have it um, so that you can watch that as well. All right, so thanks for watching. And hopefully now you know a little bit about the hidden heat to change a state okay, of a substance. Bye, everybody. Cheers.